Hey everyone, the Flutter team announced that Flutter Interact, that Flutter Web is now in beta. So today, we're going to be building a Flutter website with the New York Times API. The website will display the top articles in the technology section of the New York Times in a grid layout. When we change the width of our website, our UI responds accordingly. When we click on any of the articles, a new tab opens with the article. The first thing we're going to do is switch to the beta channel by running flutter channel beta in our terminal. Next we'll run flutter upgrade. And once flutter finishes upgrading, we'll enable web support with the command flutter config dash dash enable dash web. In VS Code I created a new project, and if we take a look at our directory, we see that there's a web folder that contains an index.html file. To run our app on localhost, we can type flutter run d chrome into our terminal. Inside our pubspec.yaml file, we're going to be adding two plugins that now have web support. The first is HTTP, which allows us to send GET requests to our API to retrieve data, and the second plugin is URL Launcher, which allows us to open links. Now let's sign up for our New York Times API key. Go to developer.mytimes.com and create an account. Once you sign in and confirm your email, click on your email in the top right, select apps, and then click new app. We'll call our app Flutter Web NYT and enable the top stories API, and then click create. Copy your API key, and let's go back to our IDE. Inside the lib directory, create a new folder called services and file called API service.dart. At the top of the file, let's import these three lines. Don't worry about the article model, as we'll write it once we finish writing this file. Our API service has two variables, the base URL for the New York Times endpoint and our API key. Normally, I store the API key in a separate file and add it to our git ignore, but we're just going to put it here to save time. Let's write the asynchronous function fetch articles by section, which takes in a string parameter and returns a future list of articles. We can see a list of valid string sections in the New York Times API documentation. We define our parameters, which in this case only has our API key, and then we create our URI by passing in the base URL, endpoint path, and then our parameters. The HTTP request example in the New York Times documentation shows us to use string interpolation to add our desired section to the end of the endpoint. Next, we use a try catch block to retrieve the response from our API call. We decode the body of our response to a map, and then iterate over the results and convert each article map to an article object using the article.fromMapFactory constructor, which we're going to write inside our article model class. After that, we just return our list of articles. If our response errors out, then we throw an error message. Let's create article model.dart inside a folder called models. This class will have six final string variables and a constructor. Our factory constructor article.fromMap parses the decoded JSON data map we pass in to get the values of the article. Factory allows us to return the article object in our constructor. Sometimes the API does not have any image URLs inside the multimedia array for the article, and in that case, we pass in a newspaper image I found online. In our web app, we're not going to be using all of these fields, but it's good to know how to retrieve other pieces of data if you want to expand on this application. Inside our main.dart file, let's remove the boilerplate code, set the title to Flutter Web NY Times, debug show checked mode banner to false, and home to home screen. Remember to import the home screen.dart file, which we're about to write. Create home screen.dart under the screens directory and add these four import statements at the top of our file. Home screen is a stateful widget with the private instance variable articles. Inside our init state function, we will call the asynchronous function fetch articles to get articles from our API. Fetch articles calls our API service function fetch articles by section with the technology string parameter and sets the state of our articles variable to update our UI. 
The build function will have a final media query variable, which we'll use for responsive UI by adjusting our UI based on the width of our screen. We return a scaffold with a list view widget that contains a size box with a height of 80.0, a center styled text widget that says the New York Times top tech articles, another size box with height 15.0, and then we check if our article's length is greater than zero. If it is, that means we can return the grid layout of our articles by calling build articles grid and pass in media query. Otherwise, we return a centered circular progress indicator to show that the articles are still loading. Now let's write our build articles grid method that takes in media query data. We create a list of grid tiles by iterating over our list of articles and converting each article to a grid tile with build article tile that takes in the current article and media query. We return a padding widget that has gridview.count as its child. We set the grid properties cross axis count, main axis spacing, cross axis spacing, shrink wrap, physics, and children. Build article tile returns a grid tile with the column child. The first widget in our column is our container widget that has a decoration image. The second widget is a styled container with a text widget that displays the title of the article. In order to make our articles clickable, let's wrap our column widget in a gesture detector. The ONTAP function will call launch URL, and we pass in the article URL. Launch URL is an async function that first checks if we can launch the URL with can launch, and if we can, then it calls the URL launcher function launch. If we can't launch the URL, then we throw could not launch URL. Let's take a look at our website. All of our articles appear in a grid layout, and we can click on any article to navigate to the New York Times link. But if we mess around with the size of our browser, the articles do not scale proportionally. This is because we hard-coded values such as the padding of our grid view and the height of our image and title containers. To fix this, let's create a helper file called responsivehelper.dart in a helpers directory that will contain four functions. Remember to import material.dart. The first function we're going to write is responsive padding, and this is the padding on the left and right side of our grid view. As the width decreases, we want our horizontal and vertical padding to decrease too. So we check if the device width is less than 700, 1200, and 1650 pixels, and return our desired padding values. The second function is responsive numgrid tiles, and just like before, we check the device width. We decrease the number of tiles in our axis from 4 to 1 based on our screen width. The third function is responsive image height, which deals with the height of our image. We set the image height based on the current screen width multiplied by a percentage. And then once the screen is less than 700 pixels, we return a hard-coded value of 250. The fourth function is responsive title height, which deals with the height of our title container, and is very similar to responsive image height. Once the screen width drops below 700, we return a hard-coded value of 120. These responsive functions are pretty repetitive, since we constantly check the device width to set our values. Luckily, there is a cleaner way to add responsive UI, which I plan to make a video about in the future. Back in our home screen, let's add in our responsive UI functions. Set the padding of our grid view to responsive padding, and our grid view's cross axis count can be set to responsive num grid tiles. For the first container in our build article tile column widget, we set the height to responsive image height, and the title container's height to responsive title height. If we run the website and change the width, we see that it's now responsive. And now we completed our Flutter website with the New York Times API. Remember to leave a like, subscribe, share this video, and star the repository on GitHub. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.